Here's how you make RGB armor in Minecraft. And these are the seeds you'll find from the new Sniffer mob. This is every new thing you'll find in the Minecraft 1.20 Trails and Tales update. Starting with the camel. And with one of these, it's possible for two players to ride the camel at once. Which does allow for some pretty cool things, like allowing your friend the ability to shoot off mobs in the distance. Well, you steer the camel in the right direction. And on top of that, they're also the first mob that's able to walk over one and a half tall blocks. So if you come across a fence, a wall, or anything like that, they're gonna be the first rideable mob that's able to do so. Well, they've also got a pretty crazy horizontal leap. So if your friend isn't able to keep the mobs away from you, that's always a backup. Minecraft piglins are now even more useful. Since if you're able to get a charged creeper over into the nether dimension, then you can use it to kill one of the piglins and now get its head as an item drop. But how is that useful? Well, not only can you wear it, but you can also place it on top of a note block, and that'll actually have the note block play the mob sounds when you trigger it with redstone. And it's not the only mob head that can do this. In fact, all of the existing mob heads can do it here, which is gonna make creeper pranks a lot more realistic. So maybe it's a good idea to turn on your subtitles so you can at least catch this in the bottom right. Minecraft's now got a new wood type, but you're not gonna get it from any kind of logs from a tree. And now if you were to take nine of the bamboo item that you get from the stock, you can craft it into a three by three and get the new bamboo block, which then itself can be broken down into bamboo planks. And there we not only have a new wood texture to play around with, but also our first experience with green wood, which is all great for builders, but it might be game breaking for the rest of us. Because as Purplus points out, bamboo farms are so much easier to set up than tree farms. Since you don't need to personally place saplings and you don't even need bone meal. It grows that fast. So while it's gonna take some time to craft these into the blocks, this could quickly become a problem for the technical community. And with just this simple change, wood farms look pretty obsolete nowadays. So uh, get used to seeing a lot of bamboo. This is a bookshelf and this is a bookshelf without books, which I guess is just a shelf. But actually this new block is called a chiseled bookshelf. And even though it looks the same as the regular bookshelf, there's one key difference, which is that by using this block, we now have a container that allows us to store our books, both written and enchanted. Oh, it's probably my favorite part about this is that you can send different redstone signals depending on whether you place a book inside of the bookshelf or take one out. And yes, that means that we can make secret bookcase doors. And for me, that's worth the price of admission. I don't care about storing my books just as long as I'm able to use them to get into my base. With six stripped logs and two chains, we're able to craft the new hanging sign item. And these special signs give us a new way to decorate our Minecraft worlds. And even though we can't place these standing up straight like a regular sign, they do still have quite a bit of options. Like the ability to hang them straight underneath a block or hang them from a fence where they take on a V shape. And you can even attach it to the side of the block where they'll have a wooden beam built into the side, which gives some great ways to decorate the outside of your shop. But again, costing six logs and two chains is quite expensive. So unless you really know where to put one of these to use, I'd much rather just stick to the regular sign. That or item frames are just so much easier to get. Along with new wooden planks, we also got this plank of wood, that being the raft. And functionally, this works in a lot of the same ways that the boat does. You can even attach a chest to its back. But the only difference is you can only craft this out of bamboo wood. But considering bamboo so easy to farm, that might not be a drawback, but a plus instead. And from there, the only other noticeable difference is that the player's gonna sit higher in this raft than they do in the boat. Which again, to me, seems weird. I don't know why they'd take the time to add this in, but hey, it does look cool. In 1.20, armor looks pretty different. And that's not because we got a new armor type, but rather new types of our armor. Since with the addition of armor trims, we now have 16 varieties that we can use to deck out our armor. You're just gonna have to work for it, because they can only be got from randomly generated loot within their respective structures. And while it's expensive enough to add these to your armor, costing one material for each trim that you want to add, they're even more expensive to get more of them, costing seven diamonds per armor trim that you want to duplicate. So I'd recommend testing out which one you want to try in creative mode, because figuring it out in survival is just way too much opportunity cost. And with the help of command blocks, some clever players have found out how to turn these armor trims into full RGB armor. And now your player can match everything else in your house. But that's not the only thing that got more expensive in 1.20, since you'll also find it a lot tougher to get netherite stuff in this new update. And and the reason for that is this new netherite upgrade, which looks a lot like these armor trims, but you wouldn't want to get it mixed up. Since the reality is that every time you want to use the smithing table to upgrade your stuff into netherite, it'll cost one of these upgrades, which even though they're guaranteed in the treasure room of every bastion, if you want to make more of them yourself, it'll cost that same seven diamond price tag. And Mogswamp has a great video arguing against this, so I don't want to restate anything that they already said there. But for me personally, I'm lucky I already have netherite. This sounds like too much of a headache to get otherwise. But on the brighter side of this update, we now have the new cherry blossom biomes, which it's in all of the promotional material. Clearly, this is the thing to look forward to. Not only giving us a new wood type and all of its new variants, but also giving us petals and leaves that we can use to decorate. Plus, it's just really nice looking. Seems like a good place to set up shop. Skulk Sensor's got a big buff in 1.20, and so did Amethyst. Since now, if we mix the two of them together like so, we can get ourselves a calibrated Skulk Sensor, which is a Skulk Sensor that'll only look for a specific sound frequency, which for redstone geniuses opens up a ton of possibilities. 
abilities, like having a system that could only detect certain player sounds like this. And it could even check for things that are specific and small, like whether a player eats or drinks nearby, which on the bright side could be used to give them some more food, or for more devilish players could be used to kill them on a full stomach. At first glance, these slimes look normal, until they start jumping, since now you can actually add the jump boost effect to slimes. And yeah, I don't really think they're coming down at this point. One of the new structures that you're gonna have to look inside for the armor trims is inside one of these new archaeological dig sites. That's right, archaeology finally got added into Minecraft. It just took a few years. But hey, as archaeology proves, what's old is new again. And inside of these trail ruins, you not only find the kind of loot that you're expecting from different structures, but also these new blocks called suspicious gravel and suspicious sand. Which isn't just an excuse for a tired Among Us joke, but those are actually the ways that you'll be digging in these sites. First, you'll just need to craft a brush, which is made with a stick, a copper ingot, and a feather. And once you use that on a block like suspicious sand, that's how you scrape through to eventually get things like these pottery shards. And that opens up a whole new thing to explore here. You thought there was a lot of armor trims? There's 20 known varieties of pottery shards, which we can then use to craft together to make our own kind of decorated pot, which for you builders out there gives you plenty of variety for new decorations. That much is expected, it's in the name. Just be careful not to break this without a silk touch pick, since if you do, it'll just drop all of the shards that you used to craft it. And while searching around the suspicious blocks you find in Trails Ruins, you now have a shot of finding the new music disc called Relics, which I'd play here, but it's copyrighted. And unfortunately, this update didn't add in a lawyer for me to argue that in court, so maybe 1.21. This here is the Sniffer, the mob that won the mob vote in 2022. And though this mob will be added in 1.20, you're not gonna find it just regularly spawning. But instead, the way that you're gonna be able to find one of these things is going down to an ocean ruins that you find in the warm ocean. And then tucked within suspicious sand, there's a 6.7% chance that you'll find a sniffer egg. From there, you place down the egg, wait for it to hatch, and there you go, a baby sniffer. And don't get it confused, while it looks small here, in time, these have become big mobs, rivaling the size of the Ravager, if that gives you any sense of scope. And as soon as you get one of these to adult status, they'll be able to help you sniff out seeds that you find in the ground. And with the ancient seeds that we find from the sniffer, we'll be able to grow those up and get ourselves the new torch flower, which despite its name, doesn't give off a light source. Yeah, that seems like a missed opportunity to me too. But you can use it to craft orange dye, which, uh, you know, is only something that the orange tulip can do. So that's, that's cool. But in all honesty, if you want something more useful out of this, put it in a suspicious stew and you get yourself night vision. At which point you don't need torches. You'll be able to see in the dark anyway. And that's not the only ancient seed that we're now able to get, since the sniffers also have a chance of giving us the pitcher pod, which again gives us a new kind of funky plant that we can use to decorate our builds. Or craft into cyan dye, which considering this is the only plant that's able to do that, that at least feels a little bit more special than what the torch flower does. Sorry, I know I'm beating a dead camel there. We can move on. Not only can we ride camels in this new update, but now camels could ride us and everything else. Yeah, I know it sounds wrong. I'll get to it in a minute. Because with the new slash ride command, we can have any mob placed on top of another. And the results quickly get out of hand. And if you thought spider jockeys were bad enough, then you haven't seen anything until you get to the likes of a warden jockey or a bee jockey. Really, there's so much to play around with here. Just boot it up and try it yourself. Finally, we've got a feature from Bedrock placed into Java, which is that now if you were to go dye items that have already been dyed into a different color, we can actually change their color back, which means you don't just need white wool to make yourself blue wool. But if your wool was already dyed red, then you can actually change the color like so, which gives you a lot more freedom for how you craft these things. And I love this feature enough when it was put in vanilla tweaks, I like it a lot better in game. Hey, even if it doesn't make logical sense, I'll overlook it this time. It could just be our little secret. And speaking of being able to correct your mistakes, we now have a new change for signs that lets us do just that. Since even after you've placed down a sign, you're able to right click it to edit the sign text like this. And then if you want to stop any vandals from editing the sign text, just wax it down with honeycomb and they won't be able to do anything else to it. I mean, I guess they could break it, which somehow seems more disruptive, but uh, they can't edit it, so there you go. Now when you beat the game and the credits start playing, you don't have to worry about missing anything, since not only are we able to speed up the credits scrolling down the screen, but we can also scroll back up to see if you miss anything. Though, speaking of someone who's read the credits before, even if you take the time to read them, they don't help out that much anyway. You're best sticking to the escape key on your keyboard and just skipping these. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?